So there's an old poker adage that says never go broke in a limped pot. And I want to review a hand with you where I did exactly that, and see if it was good or if I really mucked things up. Good morning, how are we doing today? My name is James Sweeney, aka Split Suit. Welcome back to another video. And today I want to run through a hand with you. This is from a vlog episode number seven, but I wanted to step it out and look at it a little bit more in depth. So let's get started. All right, so in this hand, we are in the small blind, look down at jack nine off, limp in early position, limp behind from the cutoff, button folds, decide to complete. And I think completing here is okay. You can make an argument for folding it, especially if you're not very comfortable post-flop, but I decide to complete. Flop is even nicer. Flop the bottom side of a straight, lead 10 into eight, get called by the big blind, get called by the early position player, and the cutoff eventually raises this up to 30. So a couple things to talk about right here. So the first thing is a live poker thing. You'll notice here that I bet 10 into eight, which is technically an over bet. But what I've noticed is that in live games, if you can just round your bets to the denomination that pretty much every single person has, in this case, a $5 chip, then it will do far, far better. So betting 10 is better than betting something like seven or eight bucks, simply because it's going to let the game move a lot faster. Dealer doesn't have to break change in case the other callers don't have the exact number with them. And that can be very, very helpful. So just keep that in mind. Yes, it is technically an over bet, but nothing to panic about. And then the second thing is that once we bet, get called in two spots, and then the cutoff raises to 30, I think this is going to be a much better situation just to flat. I don't really see much reason to three bet here. People can definitely have a large, large density, if not full combos of ace jack in their ranges. And that's definitely not a great thing for us at the end of the day. So I'd much rather just call here, let them continue with whatever single pair draws, even things like two pair. I'd rather let them continue with those those sorts of things rather than three bet here and really just punish myself when I'm up against the absolute, absolute worst of it. And you may think to yourself, well, no one should really have sets here, but you have to keep in mind in this particular room, there is a high hand promo and people tend to do very, very weird things with their strong hands preflop because they're, I don't know, trying to hit high hands, I suppose. But anyway, I'm not going to go into whether or not you should do that in general don't. But in this situation, I'm not going to be super, super surprised if other players are doing that and have some of those stronger combos. Maybe not full of those monster combos like kings and queens, but it is definitely something that I'm thinking about. And again, I think ace-jack is largely in these ranges. I don't think it should be 100% of the time, especially from the cutoff, but I'm not shocked when I see it at 1-2. So I did post this one in the Red Chip Hooker Discord, and there seemed to be some pretty good agreement that flatting here, again, is going to be better than just going for the 3-bit. So we decide to flat here as well. Get called by the big blind. Early position player folds. Turn is a very nasty queen of hearts pairing the board. I check, big blind checks. Cut off checks behind. River is a three of clubs and I Think for a moment, and then leave this out for 45. So obviously this isn't the greatest run out in the entire world since the board did end up pairing, but there definitely are still second best hands that I could get value from, things like King Jack or just Naked King in general that's feeling pretty confident, maybe things like Queen Jack or Queen Nine. So I'm definitely still looking to value bet there are second best combos that can and will continue, and I don't really see any reason to make this like a full pot size bet or anything like that. I think 45 is going to do just, just fine. But unfortunately it doesn't take too, too long before the big blind decides to throw out a raise and they shove the rest of it in there which i believe is 174 total just slightly more than i have in front of me cut off folds and now we have to make a decision. So one of the things that I really love about all-in decisions is that they are extremely mathematical. So in general, my plan here was to bet fold, but I want to take a mathematical look at this and see if that plan is any good, or if there are some ways where I could justify calling this and kind of what assumptions we need to go into that in order to make calling here a profitable endeavor. So let's start by opening up Flopzilla Pro. I've already plugged in my opponent's range, plugged in the board, plugged in my hand. And if you're looking at this range, you're like, wow, that is pretty darn tight. Pretty much we're going to start by looking at the absolute worst case scenario and then expand out and 
see how far we need to expand in order to make calling here any good. Because you'll notice right this moment, given the range that we have assigned, and we do have some down weights on things like kings and queens, because some percentage of the time they should be raising preflop, and again, the high hand promo really weirds things out in a room that doesn't have a high hand promo, probably not even including these at all. So keep that in mind when you're looking at this. But you notice against this range overall, we have 0% equity with our hand, which means we are against every single combo that crushes us here, every reasonable combo. And with that said, let's see how far we need to expand this in order to make this an okay call. So to proof out the math in this situation, I'm going to use my river call versus raise spreadsheet. This is available for free, or you can throw in some chips and get a bunch of bonuses and extra videos too. Splitsuit.com slash sheets to get that. But here are the numbers that we're throwing in. So Current pot size once they shove is 324. It is technically a little bit more than that, but again, the big blind covers us, so we don't want to include the extra chips in there. Amount we have to call right this moment is 126, and equity when we call based upon what we just saw in Flopzilla against that nuttish range is 0%, which means our EV would be negative 126 bucks, which is the absolute worst call it could possibly be, and as such, folding would be far better than calling given the range assumption that we're working with right this moment. So one of the things that I think is worth doing is going back to Flopzilla and let's change things ever so slightly for our opponent's range. Let's say that they would always shove here as well with Jack Deuce. So we're essentially saying that they have the busted straight draw and they decide to turn it into a bluff. And because they're in the big blind, they could definitely have a combo like that. And it would make sense given the flop action and the turn action. And let's just assume that they're going to shove with this as well. We well, notice we get a little bit of an equity jump. Now all of a sudden we're up to 10 percent equity so let's just throw that into the spreadsheet equity when we call 10 percent and you notice that all of a sudden this is only negative 181 so for every little bit of equity that we get thrown in our favor all of a sudden the ev starts changing massively so when i'm working through a spot like this off table since we have the time one of the things i like to do is say okay how many combos of nonsense do i have to have in my opponent's range and then also number two is did i build the value stuff correctly so for instance could i put queen jack in here maybe they think they could shove trips for value i don't think that's the case here i don't think this opponent is that kind of person but if my opponent is like really not good at this game maybe I'd consider it, but I don't consider that the case in this spot. I don't have anything leading me to believe that they're that that bad. So let's throw in, say, four of the Jack X combos. And one of the things you really have to keep in mind here is we are blocking these out, right? Because we have a Jack in our hand. So they can't have Jack five of diamonds, but they can have Jack five of spades and Jack five of hearts and Jack five of clubs. So it's adding three combos for each one of those. You notice that our equity all of a sudden is up to 29%. So let's throw that over here, 29 and now all of a sudden we are slightly, slightly profitable. So in order for this to be a very profitable call, we have to do a couple things. One, throw in some extra Jack X combos. Let's just say we throw in some of these and remember the offsuit combos are going to have more combos overall. And all of a sudden he knows our equity is over 50%. This is certainly going to be profitable and 52%. And now all of a sudden we're plus EV to the tune of 108 bucks every single time we call, which is great. And one of the things that I think is worthwhile is coming in here and just saying, okay, like, what if they don't also shove ace jack? What does that do? And now all of a sudden we're in a very different situation since our equity is much, much higher, roughly 67%. So obviously that's going to also be plus EV as well. So this is one of the ways that you can kind of explore a hand like this after sessions and then say, okay, are my original assumptions in game good based upon those? What was the EV and what was the EV looking like if I make slight tweaks? weeks and changes to my opponent's range frequencies, whatever it be. And these all in situations are great because they're incredibly, incredibly mathematical. Simple tools will help you get all the answers you need and really explore these spots out and understand, okay, how many bluffs do I really need my opponent to have here in order to see if this was a good or not so good call. So as it stands, I had seen this opponent bluff previously in the session. And that's always something that I'm keeping in mind. Obviously at 1-2 in general, I'm assuming that they are not bluffing often enough and definitely not bluffing rivers often enough either. So against the average 1-2 player, this is most certainly going to be a bet fold and a very, very comfortable one at that. Now, as your opponent gets more and more aggressive, can have more and more bluff combos, then you, as you notice through the EV math we were just doing, you can justify this either being good or mm, not really. So in this situation, I had seen them bluff before, and that's important, not in this exact spot, but I had seen them bluff before, and I had seen them bluff for a big number. Always something to keep in mind. There's a big difference between someone bluffing for a small number versus someone bluffing for their entire stack. 
So I had seen it, but that being said, this is a really ambitious bluff to run with all of your Jack X combos. Now they are in the big blind, they can have pretty much full Jack X combos based upon the way this hand played out. So that was factoring through my head here, but I still think this is probably a little too optimistic unless I had seen them be very, very aggressive and bluffy in this situation. And I'm just not seeing that. I don't think I have the proof point to justify calling this off. Again, there's not like a tremendous amount of like combos that absolutely crush us, but this is still a spot where I don't think it's going to be all that good. I think I probably should have stuck with my bet fold plan overall, unless, unless I have that information that they are a little bit bluffier than the average one, two player. And by a little bit, I mean quite a bit. So I double check that I'm in the exact situation that I think I'm in. Yep. Still the same spot. And I'm making the call. He shows me pocket Kings and no good for us. So to the original question in the beginning of this video, did I make a mistake by going broke in a limped pot in this exact situation? I hate to say it, but I think I did. I think I should have stuck with the bet fold plan. I think I got a little optimistic with how many bluffs they were actually going to show up with, but now you at least know how to proof this situation out, how to look at it, how to think about it, and hopefully not make the same mistake that I did the next time you find yourself in the exact same or at least very similar situation. And keep in mind that this is just a single hand from vlog episode number seven, the session over Overall, was absolutely brutal and totally worth a watch if you haven't done so already. I'll leave a link for that in the description box or one of those card things somewhere up there. And that's going to wrap it for this one. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you have any comments or questions, please don't hesitate to let me know. And of course, a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video would be massively appreciated too. Otherwise, we'll see you back shortly with a brand new video. In the meantime, good luck out there and happy grinding.